As we've heard, the builder category encompasses many varied positions and roles, all of which positively impact the game. Our next inductee, though, perhaps represents the literal definition of builder to a T. His love affair with lacrosse began in Brampton, where he played minor lacrosse for 11 years before joining the Excelsior's Junior A team in 1974. He tended goal for Brampton for six seasons, helping lead the team to a Minto Cup berth in 1976, and in 1979 joined Peterborough, going to his second Minto Cup final. Upon graduating from the junior ranks, he joined the Orangeville Northman senior team in 1980 and played there until hanging up his pads in 1988. During his senior playing career, the Northman won Ontario titles in 1981, 82, 83, 84, and 85, and President's Cup titles, emblematic of Canadian senior lacrosse supremacy, in 1981, 82, and 84. Perhaps the most significant thing about his playing career, however, and a prelude to the many management roles he would fill in the future, was that while still an active player, he served on the Northman executive from 1981 to 87, even acting as team president in 1983 and 84. Once he retired from his playing days with the Northmen, he focused his keen sense of building for the future by maintaining his involvement off the floor. In 1989, he was a key participant in the resurrection of Orangeville's dormant Junior B program. As the new club's general manager, he built a team of players who had been out of the game for several years and won a national championship in their first year of operation. A second Founders Cup title followed in 1990 and, along with fellow Orangeville native Terry Sanderson, he moved the team into the Junior A ranks the following year. He became the GM of the Junior A squad in 1991 and held that post until 1996, adding the President's title in 1995 and 96. During that period, the Northmen prospered, to say the least, winning Middle Cup titles in 1993, 95, and 96. In 2001, it was back to square one, sort of, as he again played a key role in bringing Junior B lacrosse back to Orangeville while at the same time serving as general manager of the Brampton Excelsior's major club, guiding his old team to a Man Cup berth. From 2003 to 2006, he went from lacrosse executive to juggler, at times holding as many as three positions simultaneously. In 2003, he served as assistant general manager of Team Canada, World Box Lacrosse Champions, and also began a four-year stint as GM of the Orangeville Junior B Club leading them to the Ontario Finals in 2006. Balancing two jobs clearly wasn't enough of a challenge, so in 2004, he added the position of Assistant General Manager of the NOL's Toronto Rock to his portfolio, a post he maintained until 2006, and one that included an NOL title in 2005. He returned to the Junior A ranks in 2007, once again taking on the dual role of President and GM of the Northmen. He held both positions until 2011, presiding over Mindo Cup Championship seasons in 2008 and 2009 and the runner-up campaign in 2010. And in 2012 and 2013, held only the GM's position and guided the squad to yet another Mindo Cup title in 2012. In 2014, it was seemingly back to normal in Orangeville, with our inductee again sporting the roles of president and general manager, roles he holds to this day. And oh yeah, the Northmen were Mindo Cup finalists once again in 2016. Clearly, he has been a diligent and dedicated worker for our sport for many years, and not surprisingly, his hard work has earned him both rewards and awards. As a player, coach, and executive, he has been a part of 16 Ontario Championships, 13 Canadian Championships, two World Championships, and an NAL cha- NLL Championship. He was awarded the Orangeville Minor Lacrosse Builder of Lacrosse Award in 1989, the Junior A Northman Builder of Lacrosse Award in 1993, and the OLA President's Award, recognizing 20 years of service to the sport of lacrosse. In 2014, he was inducted into the Orangeville Sports Hall of Fame, and a year later, 2015, he was welcomed into the Ontario Lacrosse Hall of Fame. His success has been attributed to both his simple message of love and respect for the game, and his encouragement of those who played for him to get back to the sport, and its future generations. A builder in every sense of the word, please welcome to the Hall of Fame, Bob Cleveland. (laughs) 
Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank, uh, thank the induction committee, uh, both the Eastern uh, Induction Committee and also the Canadian Lacrosse Hall of Fame Induction Committee. Uh, it's a great honor. I also want to congratulate all the other inductees. Um, uh, couldn't be thrilled to be going with a, a, a better group. Um, and there's some interesting people, there's some contacts there that over the years I've been involved with. Um, along with Rick Mang. Uh, Rick, I've known Rick, he was a, another uh, Brampton goaltender, silly enough to play in that and for the Brampton Junior Excelsiors. Ken Colley, I uh, got a chance to talk to you last night, but played against you and your brother, but five years against you, I was looking at the stats the other night and I was looking at the stats and I was going, I, I remember you scored a lot on me. <laughs> I knew that you scored a lot on me, but you know, having almost 400 goals in regular season just, uh, and with the Whitby Builders and some of the challenges and the, the, um, the games we had against that organization and congratulations uh, to you coming into the Hall of Fame, I think it's fantastic. Uh, Jan McGee, um, I gotta tell this story because it was my first time ever playing um, for the Junior A's. Uh, I didn't play my last year midget, I played up with the Junior A's that year. I was, started off as the backup and the very first game I got called in, uh, it was that 1974 team that went 44 and 0. Nobody else could remember that around our table except for the two Pebra people and myself because they played against them. They were an amazing team. But in the game, the other goaltender started the game and uh, uh, they were running the score up pretty high. I got called in my very first start to play the game. And uh, I thought I was, I was playing pretty good. I had a pretty good game going. And uh, I remember they had set up a power play and the ball was moving around and Jan McGee let a shot go and it hit me straight in the head and knocked me right on my back, knocked me out completely. Uh, I mentioned that to JJ before, and JJ goes, well, don't, don't feel alone. He did that to every goaltender in the Junior A League. <laughs> as soon as they got a little bit hot, but I remember I got, I got knocked out, it was kind of waking up. JJ actually came to the crease, and he looked at me and he said, hey, kid, he said, uh, welcome to Junior A, and if you stop any more balls, there's gonna be another one right at your head again. <laughs> so that was it. We ended up 20 to 11 or something after that, but was, that was my start. Um, and, uh, you know, if I, I want to talk about something being full circle and, and that being with Pat Coyle. Uh, we talked about uh, our junior program had, after we had played uh, uh, our senior lacrosse days were over, especially Terry and I, we wanted to know what we could do to bring junior program back into, into Orangeville and we talked about establishing a junior club after three, day, uh, three years being dormant. And so, our job was to try and, we had a lot of players that ended up playing in other organizations because we didn't have a junior B program. And uh, my job was to try and get those players back. And there was two players that they, uh, we had to get, one had to, be, had to be Pat Coyle, and the other was John Grant. And it's not the John Grant that you're thinking of, it's another John Grant that played for us, who played junior A, both Pat and John played junior A in Brampton. And um, I, I was able to convince, I didn't know if I'd be able to get Pat and John to play because they'd already been playing Junior A lacrosse. And I said, you know, we're trying to get this program going again and we need, we need some players of your caliber to come back to the organization. And, and both John and Pat came back to the organization and that, that first year really started the program again that carried on to, you know, two Founders Cups, then a Junior A program that's been in place for almost 28 years. So it's really interesting you know, how that has turned around completely um, to see Pat again. And, you know, a couple of years ago, Pat was coaching Coke Whitlam as the head coach. And my son, who was a ball boy, was the head coach of the Junior A Northman team. And um, it, it, it's just so weird how that, that turns around. And then, and then tonight, uh, we're going in the Hall of Fame together. So talk about uh, how something goes around and, um, and you, you come back together in a connection. But, you know, Pat, thank you for that because by you coming back, I think all you said to me, B, you gotta give me a job. If you get me a job, and I think I got you on some crazy job up in the towers that probably could have hurt you. So, um, so that's exciting. I guess the, um, you know, just quickly, one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm very, very honored about this award tonight uh, and this recognition, but I really truly, what I am the most proud of really with the Orange organization is the fact that uh, the young men that wore a Northman jersey over those 28 years, and the fact how they have, how they've turned out as as men. Now, 
men now, but not just young men, but you know, having the opportunity to go off to universities in the United States, coming back and being able to fulfill both what they've been able to do in lacrosse and also in their lives and how well they've come along. And that to me is, is one of the things that we tried to nurture with the Northland organization it was about character, dedication, of course, but you know, bringing these people up right and doing the right thing. So, you know, many of them have gone on past the junior careers and, um, you know, played in man cups, uh, national or NLL championships. Um, we have as many as 45 players that made it to the NLL that were from the Northman organization at the same time. So I just, uh, I just in closing quickly, uh, and I think it is shorter, David. Um, I, I, I just want to say that uh, unfortunately my wife Fiona could not be here tonight because she works with the Ontario Lacrosse Association and this is their AGM this weekend. And my son would probably would have been here, but he also works with the Toronto Rock. So uh, as you can tell, it's, it's, it's pretty much a, a lacrosse family. And just like uh, when, if you're in a lacrosse family, you know where the priority takes place. So I'm out here and they're doing their thing too. So uh, again, I want to thank uh, everybody. It's great to see some of the people I haven't seen in a while. And it's, uh, it's a real honor and I really appreciate that. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.